All right, let me try and explain this to you. This is the driveway over on the new property, and I'm gonna try and take the excavator way up onto the corner of the hill right there. If I can get the excavator up there, I'm going to start the process of digging out that landing. And then once I have the landing established, that's where I can start cutting the trail that goes all the way up to the top of the property. But the landing is where I want to process the firewood. When I come off the hill, when I when I start thinning the trees, when I all, all the wood's gonna come from that way in the future. And my thoughts are, I need to have a designated spot to process the firewood, uh, but I also need to have a switchback, a point where uh, when I come off the hill with this stuff, I can unload it and safely turn around. So it needs to be a pretty good sized little hole. Step one is just to see if I can even get the excavator up there. Well, the good news is the chains on my rubber tracks work great. A little bit higher and a little bit left of the excavator is where I want this landing to start, but there's a few trees that are going to be in the way. Now this week's video is going to have even more time lapse than usual because I spent the entire week in the excavator once I figured out that with the chains on the tracks I could basically go wherever I needed to go. So by the end of the week the entire landing will be built and about 200 yards of the new trail will be cut in. We own 85 acres, but because of how steep the mountainside is, we really only have access to about the lower five. By purchasing the lot next to us, we now have the width in our land to put in the switchbacks and safely access the back of our property, where I've spent almost no time. And even though there is still snow, the ground is not frozen, and I'm ready to work.
Originally, my plan was to add twice as many chains to these rubber tracks on the excavator, but after playing around with the excavator for a couple of hours, clearly the tracks are working just fine the way they are. Because I've now committed myself to a few days worth of work, again, by the end of this video, you will see what the landing has turned into, and you will see the start of this trail that I've wanted to cut into the side of our mountain for at least a couple of years now. And as much as I'd rather not take down any more trees than I have to, I'm trying to pick the location of this landing away from any very large maple trees. And again for the location of this first switchback, which will give me access to parts of our property that I've never set foot. The 1969 F-250 with the 7.3 IDI and the ZF-5 transmission is officially ready to be taken apart and then put back together for what should be the final time. But before I take everything apart, I need to get the Super Duty hitch installed on this frame. Cedar brought me an afternoon snack. I'm still trying to track down a good core support for this truck, but other than that I've got most everything I'm going to need to finish the project. For the moment, I think I'm going to reuse the 1990 wiring harness at least to get the truck started, but I may replace it at some point down the road. It is officially time to remove the cab from the frame so I can do some rust repair on this cab. And I want to carefully lift the cab off and set it on some saw horses where I can get access to the rust. And this is how you show off in front of your girlfriend.
I needed to get the third brace installed on the diesel tank to call this job officially done, but I'm likely not going to fill this tank until the snow is gone and I can see how it settles. But like I did when I originally installed the tank behind the shop, I'm going to run chains from the top of the tank down to the concrete blocks so there's no way this tank could tip over. Okay, so now I'm getting a couple of days into this project, and while it's a big mess, I'm still trying to envision what I originally saw in my head, and to frankly just keep digging. I think technically this is called a dugway, which is a term you hear all the time in my neck of the woods. But the only way I get flat ground around here is by digging into the side of the mountain and using the excess dirt to build the platform on. Because of the snow and the moisture in the ground, this is going to settle quite a bit as it warms up. I've had to remove somewhere between 15 and 20 trees so far in the process. But out of those 15 to 20 trees, I now have about two cords of firewood that can be curing between now and summertime when I'll buck it up and get it ready for next winter. At some point, I'm probably going to have to slow down and be a little bit more methodical about the firewood. Because naturally, if I keep cutting down trees at some point, there may not be any trees left but there are still thousands of unhealthy trees that will have to be thinned out and can be used as firewood. So now I've been working on this landing for about three days and we're starting to see some progress. There's still a lot of dirt that has to be moved, but I can see where I want to go and I shouldn't have to take out too many more trees, at least right here around the landing. But when I look at our land and how best to utilize it, and in my opinion to get the most out of what I have to work with, I'm just going to have to remove some of these trees. Originally when I first started thinning the property, I left one tree for every 40 foot circle, but I'm not going to do that anymore because that's not enough trees. But still there are so many dying and dead trees that have to be removed so the other trees can survive. One of the small structures that I'm going to build probably right here on this landing at some point is going to be a sugar shack. And I'm going to figure out how to use these maple trees and turn their sap into usable syrups and sugars.
The tracks on my excavator were destined for the landfill. And now with these chains, these tracks can easily last me a few more years. When I first laid eyes on this land and I tried to talk myself into the idea of living full time up here, I thought that I could go through the entire 40 acres and thin the trees in three months. After spending what was basically the first year doing nothing but cutting trees down, I realized this was going to be a long term project. Having the excavator helps me thin these trees much faster than I originally did, but I try to turn everything I can into usable firewood as the trees get plucked out of the ground, so even with the excavator it still takes a lot of time. But back before we would purchased our property and when I was looking for land I can remember asking myself, would I rather have a piece of raw untouched ground that hadn't been influenced by somebody else's ideas? that would likely require way more work to make usable? Or would I rather find some rundown homestead that I could polish up and make mine? Obviously I chose the first option. And hopefully I get to spend the rest of my life trying to figure out this land. While it's typically a little bit early for most people to be working on their firewood, I have found that it's always smart to be working on your firewood. So I've decided that I like to have at least two new cords of firewood coming into the mix every summer, and that should keep us on top of things. As I go through this maple here and determine what I can burn as firewood and what just needs to be burned on the fire, I now have all the firewood I need to keep my family warm next winter. This is a little bit more than two cords. If you only knew how many times a day I tell myself my life would be so much easier if we had picked a piece of flat ground instead of the side of a mountain to carve our life into. But I'm here to tell you I wouldn't have it any other way.
In my life, it has become very clear that life requires resistance, meaning I must push back in some way, otherwise life's going to push back against me. Doing hard things like this is one of the ways that I try to push back. By choosing where I have resistance in my life, the resistance in other places seems to go away. And I personally would rather choose where that resistance is going to be as opposed to letting life simply push me around. This is a perfect time of year to burn this brush pile if I can get the brush pile lit. And I've learned over the last few years how to get a good fire started without using diesel or gasoline. And more than anything with this maple, it takes time to get a hot fire going. I would spend almost the entire day watching this fire, doing my best to keep it going, but it really didn't get hot until the day after. Once these maple fires get going, even though the wood is as wet as it is, they burn incredibly hot with very little smoke. And this is why we love it as firewood. I listen to way too many books about the Old West and about history. I'm currently listening to a book about the Donner Party right now, and I find myself thinking, could I do what the early pioneers did in this country in order to survive? Could I find a piece of unsettled ground and clear the land and put a farm in and build a home and all of the things that are required to qualify for the free land and the Homestead Act? And I tell myself that I probably could do it. But the truth is, as I sit in my excavator and as I check the weather on my phone through an app, while listening to one of these books while I'm working, I'm clearly using all of the technology available to me. And I couldn't imagine clearing this land with an axe and a buck saw. So as much as I'm grateful to the early pioneers and the early settlers that did things with nothing but an ax and a buck saw and a couple of mules, I love doing it with an excavator because using this equipment that I have found works best for our situation, takes a giant project and condenses it into a one-man job that can be done fairly quickly. And it's taken me a few years to figure out what the right equipment is 
and at the moment it's about a 10,000 pound excavator and a good sized skid steer and most everything that I need to do around here I can get done with those two pieces of equipment. There was a time when I thought I needed an even bigger excavator than this but the more I use this excavator the more I realize that that an excavator a whole lot bigger than this starts to get a little bit cumbersome and hard to get up the side of a mountain. I've now had the fire going for a couple of days and even the big stumps are slowly starting to disappear. When these maple fires do get going, they are very, very hot. In the very early days, I had a brush pile burn for about a week that would end up getting partially buried. And a month later, I uncovered that pile and the coals were still hot as can be. This is the direction I'm going to go with the trail, up behind the water tanks. And then I'm going to put in a switchback and do it again. When I show up over here to start work, the very first thing I do is stir that fire up and make sure it's burning as hot as it can be. But now I'm working on this trail, and as long as I stay on the path that I'm supposed to, this should take me up around the water tank, and the trail should be much less steep and much safer for us to use. And then once the first part of this trail is established, we'll put in a switch back and start working on the second part of the trail.
Now that the brush pile and the stumps are nearly burned down, you can see the size of the landing and it should be the perfect size, although as it dries out and the dirt settles, I may move this around a little bit more. But now that I have the trail established, my goal for today is to get as far up on the hill as I possibly can. And the more I use the excavator and work my way up the hill, the better I get at this process. I typically move the snow out of the way and take a few scoops of dirt from one side, moving it to the other. Then with the blade on the downhill side, I drive forward 15 or 20 feet and use the excavator blade to smooth out the new trail. I try to pick the trail around any big maple trees if I can help it, but there's always a few little ones that have to be moved out of the way. And at some point over summer, I'll come back and turn them into firewood. Because there's so much competition for sunlight, there are so many of these trees that are leaning over and will have to be removed. Well, what I'm not showing you on this video is how high I've been able to get up the side of the mountain. I'm now literally up behind the house and the location for the switchback that I'm aiming at is maybe 100 yards away. On our next video, I'm gonna find the time to continue to work on the trail, but I'll have to be careful as the snow's melting like crazy around here right now and the weather is just exceptionally warm for the month of February. But now that I know that I can do this with the excavator, by the time the snow is gone, my hope is to have this trail completely cut in. Now the entire purpose of the trail is to help us get access safely to places that are currently much too difficult to get to. Therefore, I never go up there. But in my opinion, the back of our property might be some of our best property. So this first trail, represents about 25% of the entire trail that will have to go in to get us to the back of the property. It's getting a little bit muddy here on the landing, but now you can see just in fact how big it turned out. This is exactly what I needed. You can't quite see it, but right at the center of the screen and about a hundred yards away from where I'm working, it's where our water tanks sit that feed the house. So I'm pretty far up here on the hill. Thank you guys for stopping by to check in on us. It really means the world to us. On next week's video, I'm going to get the drone out and really show you what I've accomplished over here.